Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today. I am Stephanie and I go by StampJG here on YouTube and at my blog at StampJG.com. Today I have to show you in action the We Are Memory Keepers book binding guide. It is a brand new product that they have come out with that will allow you to pierce holes so that you can sew together little journals and books and things. This looks like a really cool product. The back of the packaging for the book binding guide states that the features are it includes book binding guide, all, curved and straight needle, waxed thread, instructions, Japanese stitching templates, and a storage pocket. It easily pierces through eight sheets of paper, bookboard, and leather, and you can create books up to nine inches or 23 centimeters tall. So you have the, the book binding tool and a little pouch. It's a firm, kind of stiff felt. It's kind of cool. Uh, sharp tool alert. A little booklet. Inside the little clamshell packaging here. We've got some waxed thread. It appears to be kind of a nice stiff weight. We have a curved needle, sharp tool alert, and a straight needle. It has a fairly sharp tip, but not too sharp. And it has an instruction booklet. The little pamphlet that comes with it has instructions for piercing and sewing a saddle stitch, a Coptic stitch, and Japanese bound. It's a very thin little pamphlet that looks like... Okay, the pamphlet... Okay, the pamphlet is not really intended to be a tutorial. Let me uh, let me just say that right up front. You're probably going to have a hard time, or I know I'm having a hard time, um, looking at these diagrams, trying to figure out exactly what is being accomplished here. There are very few words, and it's all relying on pictures that are a little vague to me. I do like this in the back about the Japanese bound templates. Those are kind of cool. We're probably going to want to be on YouTube looking for some instructions, some clear instructions on how to do the actual stitching for these projects. The binding should be fairly straightforward, but the stitching, this is going to be not as helpful. But that's why we have YouTube. Okay, so this bookbinding guide itself has a couple of little knobs that hold the guide on and they come off very easily move these off to the side and let's start with the base okay the base is a hollow plastic which is good because you want to be able to poke the needle through here and it has some clearance before it hits the base the back of the plastic has some non-stick feet and there are two sides to the guide. On the left side of the guide there is a single row of holes and on the right side of the guide there are three rows of holes across. But this is kind of interesting. If I turn it into the light you're going to be able to see that the left side actually goes in a little bit. There's a very slight angle. On the left side, on the right side, your other left, um, it's flat. However, there is this ledge here. And this is very thought out because you're going to be able to stack paper up against this ledge and secure it with the guide and poke holes through multiple sheets of paper. So this is for binding that you want on the flush, and this is binding probably, this is for binding up the middle of folded paper. The plastic piece here 
it's a see-through light green plastic piece it has holes I'm gonna see you can see on here that um, every other hole is marked with a black circle and that should help with the templates in placing your stitches and you'll also notice if I push turn this out to the light that it is also got a very slight angle up on one side like a mountain angle and if I turn it over and the opposite on the back of it it kind of dips in a little bit kind of like a valley so this matches up very nicely to the angle that's in this side of the book binding tool and it also sits flush you know it has no problem sitting flush on this side it's what it's been designed to do so so far I am thinking this is a very well thought out tool to start off with I'm going to show you the simplest way that this tool works if you take a piece of paper and I have a piece of copy paper it is a cream color and I have folded it in half and scored it I've scored it actually and folded it in half you don't have to score it it helps with a nicer fold and I'm gonna put it on the side of the book binding tool that has the angle so I'm going to match the valley with the indent or the angle in here I also want to point out that the tool has little ledges on either the top or the bottom and this will be helpful to line up if you have multiple pieces of paper again the guide says it'll punch through eight pieces of paper and we'll try that out in a minute but I'm gonna set this up against the bottom into the fold and into the angle I'm going to take the guide piece with the valley piece the little angle on it facing into the valley on the paper and the valley on the tool so that this will line up correctly with the fold on my paper and I've got it lined up against the bottom here and about two two to three turns on the little knobs and you're good to go this is in there tightly now once I push down this is not moving but I can lightly pull it around this is the awl and it's a very sharp tool you want to be very careful with it um, and this is going to poke through the middle of your paper well we're going to choose to poke through the middle of the paper let me zoom in you'll notice and see that every other hole has a black circle around it All right, you can see where my paper is right up at the top here and it kind of just is clearing this hole so I would not start punching holes right at the very edge that's just not not good form we could start at this one here needle in straight up and down and poke and you can kind of feel it go through and if I do every other black circle I'm gonna skip this unmarked circle and skip this circle skip that circle skip go in here so I'm gonna do every other black circle now the what I like about the guide is you can so you can punch holes as close together as you want or as far apart as you want if you only wanted to punch say seven holes across the spine or five holes you can you could decide in advance where you want to poke your holes or if you wanted to poke every hole that's a lot of stitching the key to this is when you have perfectly spaced holes and you can put multiple pieces of paper together all your holes are going to be aligned and you're not going to have any problems stitching in this case I have taken the same heavyweight paper this is ivory kind of um, heavyweight paper and I have taken four sheets and I've cut them in half so I've got eight sheets of paper the book binding tool says it will punch through eight sheets of paper and let me just demonstrate the second side 
without folding these, now I could fold them this way or whatever and put them back through here, but without folding them, if I stick them on this edge, they are gonna match up flush with this and you're just gonna get about eight sheets. And again, I'm going to line it up here at the bottom. Now there is not a ledge at the bottom, but I'm going to just tap it lightly against the side and make sure it's on the bottom. I'm going to take the tool, you notice how there's an angle here, we don't need the angle, so we're going to leave that up at the top and leave the bottom, which is angled but kind of flat, flat enough to hold the paper, I'm assuming. And I'm going to line that up here. And I'm having to push a little bit to get the screw guides to engage here. But they are in. Okay. So let me show you on the side here. You can tell there's a difference here. So all these are flush. They are firmly secured in the tool. And now I'm going to poke some holes up the side. Again, I'm kind of flush with the bottom. And if I pick... Okay, so here's... Here's where the fun is. You can, in fact, put eight sheets of paper on here. You are going to use some force to get through them. And I forgot which holes. <laughs> I forgot which holes I was choosing. I'm glad this is just for demonstration purposes. This is taking a little bit of force, but honestly, it's not bad. Let's take this out and see how it did. Okay, I will say it went through all eight sheets of paper without a problem. You're not going to be able to see it on camera, but it has gone through all eight sheets of paper. This is the back side. You can see where the needle comes through. So it took a little bit more force, but truthfully, not a problem. Not a problem at all. So now I have eight sheets of paper with the same holes in each one. So what I have here is a piece of, I'm going to say medium weight chipboard. I don't have any bookboard at this point. It is not covered. It is just raw chipboard. I have cut it down to five inches square or five and a half inches square. And I want to see if this is going to pierce holes through this. It's, it's you know, fairly, fairly heavy weight. And if I go again here and I line it up at the bottom, now if I were doing a real project here at this point, I would make sure my holes were the same as one of the pieces of paper I have. In this case, I'm gonna hold it in place Secure the knobs. Okay, see, yeah. When it's thicker, it doesn't necessarily, you have to kind of push on the guide a little bit so that the threads of the knob engage with the plastic. So let's see if I poke every other black hole. This goes through it very nicely. I, I don't have a problem. Now, if you want to make a slightly diff larger hole, you could probably twist your tool, your awl. You could call it a pokey tool, <laughs> pokey thingy, um, or awl is, I guess, the technical term. And that might give you a little bit rounder hole, a little bit, tiny bit wider. And it has gone through very, very cleanly. Oh, 
all the way to the other side without much force at all. So it did go through this very nicely. For this project, I'm going to make a little mini notebook with lined pages. I'm using regular loose leaf paper that I pulled off of a paper pad. It is uh, eight and a half by 11, so my book is gonna be small. And in order to make sure that the lines are going in the right direction, I cannot fold it in this direction here. I have to fold it the long way. That's how it's set up. So I am going to fold this in half, and I'm gonna trim it down. But I've got, I believe it was five pages. Yes, I have five sheets of eight and a half by 11 note paper. I folded in the middle and now I'm going to cut it down. I have a piece of pretty cardstock here. This is a half of a sheet of eight and a half by 11 that I cut and I'm going to fold it this way in order to make my cover. Cardstock is very important to score if you can do it at all possible because it'll keep it from cracking and I need to score this at four and a quarter. And the side with the single line Line it up against one end or the other. You can choose any one. Okay, now we are ready to punch. Let's decide where we want our holes. I'm going to pick one hole in on each end, punch a hole, and then I'm going to pick the hole in the middle. Now I can count them if I so wish, or I can eyeball it. I chose to eyeball it. So now I have three holes. I'm going to choose to punch one more hole in between each of these and I'm just going to eyeball it. I want to go center. Uh, you could count. I have to pick between these two holes. Again, I could choose to put more holes into this. There, that's not, you know, that's always an option. I prefer to do less sewing. <laughs> so I have poked five holes into my little booklet. And I'm going to set aside my tool now that I'm done punching, and I'm going to sew the middle. Take a length of thread that is roughly twice or three times taller then your project. So one, two, I'm gonna go three times since it's short. Head and thread your needle. Again, it comes with waxed linen thread that's white. I don't wanna use it because you can't see it on camera. Get a needle threader if you want, or just play with it yourself, well, however you want to do that. I prefer to use a needle threader. Makes it nice and simple. I 
I think. <laughs> Pull firmly. Put this back in your needle book. So you don't lose it. That's one thing I do is I seem to lose my needle threader quite a bit. Yeah. Okay, now we're ready to sew. Again, I want my knot in the middle. So I'm going to come in from the outside and my knot is going to be where I start. So if I pull all the way through here and hold on to my tail, this is where my end is going to be. This is where my knot is going to be. I could choose to do it at either end or any other hole that I want, but this is where I'm choosing it. So I've come to the outside and I'm going to go into the next hole available. It does not matter which direction you want to move in. Top or bottom, it just does not matter. You're going to cover the whole piece. This first stitch, you want to hold on to your tail because it will come through. And then you're just going to go into the next hole available and come to the outside. And you can pull firmly here because you're still holding on to your tail. Now that there's nowhere to go, I'm going to go in, back in this direction to this next hole. I'm going to be careful not to pierce this thread when I come back through it. I'm going to pull firmly and just kind of come in. And pull. So you can pull really firmly at this point. You don't want to be wrinkling your pages or anything, but you want to get a bit of firm, firm tug. In this case, I am going to skip this hole. Even though it's the next hole, I'm going to go beyond it to the following hole and go up the other direction. So I'm going to come back out here and this is going to make this a long thread. And I can pull pretty firmly now. And then once you're outside, you come back in and go to the next available hole and pull. Since I have no more to go in this direction, I'm going to come back towards the middle, go into the next available hole, making sure I don't split the thread already in there. Come out the other side, and now I'm going to come up the middle to finish my stitch. When I do this, when I come up the middle, I'm going to put my needle in slightly. I want to make sure that I come out on the opposite side of the thread so that this long thread is going to be between my tail and the thread I'm now making. Okay, so pull firmly. And now I have, I'm going to tie a knot between these two, but I'm going to tie it over the thread in the middle. And you can pull firmly and you can knot it again or not if you wish. Wax linen thread when you use it will hold a very firm knot so you don't have to worry about it coming undone as much and you can cut your tails as little as skinny or as thick as you like. You can leave them long and tie a charm in the middle. The op you know it's endless and of course, if you're making a book, you probably aren't going to choose a bright orange thread like I've got here. I'm just trying to show you on camera. So the fewer the stitches on the end, the longer your stitches are going to be. Uh, actually, let me rephrase that. The fewer the holes that you punch, that means the longer the stitches are going to be between them. And that's something to consider when you're making your project. This is a cute little book. There's not too much to cut off the end if you want it to be flat here. But it's a, just a cute little book to take with you. And it's got lightweight paper in it, so you, you're not having all that bulk. On this piece of paper here, where I punched every hole, 
I'm going to stitch this up and show you what that would look like if you wanted to do a book with all these holes. I wanted to show you what your project might look like if you choose to punch less holes or more holes depending upon the look you want and in some respects how secure you want your papers on the inside to be. Thank you again for joining me today as we looked at the We Are Memory Keepers book binding tool. I was excited to purchase this at an online store and I really think that this is going to make binding little journals and projects a whole lot of fun. If you have any questions please leave them down in the comments below if I've missed anything or if there's more you want to know about. I'm also going to leave links to two of my favorite book binding, my favorite book binding channels on YouTube um, to give you more inspiration on how to bind. They are, they're not using this tool, they're doing it without the tool, but they've got some really cool ideas. So thank you again for joining me and I hope you'll come again soon. Thanks!